What's up, guys? Larson Press. Let's uh, talk about it. I know Alex recently made a video, uh, Alpha Destiny. Uh, when he makes a video on the subject, uh, it tends to uh, popularize whatever he's talking about, if, you know, at least temporarily. Um, you know, my man Paris, Bald Omni Man, he's been pimping Larson Press hard lately, too. Uh, props to him. Uh, it's not an uncommon movement. Um, like I said, just uh, when. When somebody with the, the subscriber count and the outreach of uh, Alex posts something, uh, it tends to be on the tip of people's tongue again. As far as it goes, um, you know, Adrian Larson uh, coined the term Larson Press. Uh, if you don't know Adrian Larson, he was born with some medical issues uh, in his legs. Uh, he benched 585 pounds as a 220 back in like 2013. It was a world record when he did it. Um, and, and he coined the term for the Larson Press. Uh, it's not exclusive to him, but when you hit world records and you train as such, you get the name of the fucking lift. Uh, it, it dates back years and years ago. Um, me and Steve Shaw talked about it uh, on his channel. Uh, you know, the old heads back in the day would call it like the Frankenstein bench press. Uh, there was also the dead bug bench press. Which is very similar to the Larson style with your feet out. The, just the dead bug is with your uh, legs, you know, up in the air and your knees at a 90 degree angle like a dead bug. Um, so, you know, th there's more than one variant of the, the feet up style bench press. Uh, but the Larson press is sort of with your feet, you know, straight out over the bench. Um, and again, coined by Adrian Larson. As far as my personal experience with the movement... I would venture to say that I have more reps on camera on YouTube of Larson pressing than anybody on YouTube, probably Adrian Larson himself included, uh, simply by virtue of me uploading more on YouTube than him. Uh, I have, I've won a t-shirt from Adrian Larson himself in a Larson press competition. I, I would uh, not so humbly call myself an expert on the movement. Um, that said, uh, I, you know, it's being discussed now in the community. Why, what, how, is it good? Is it game changing, et cetera, et cetera. So let, let's, let's start with one thing first. Like it's a great movement. Um, it, you know, it is a secondary movement to your bench press in 99% of the cases. Um, it, it's going to help your bench press. Uh, like all accessories, uh, and supporting movements to your main lifts, it is going to be as effective as your individual goals and weaknesses dictate. There is no be all end all accessory movement as much as I love the Larson press and it is by far and away my favorite bench press movement. That's not the bench press itself. Uh, it, it's not... It's not going to just, you know, oh, I'm going to add 100 pounds to my bench press in three months because I start large, Larson pressing. It's not that. Again, you know, you have to diagnose your own weaknesses, uh, leverages, et cetera, et cetera, to determine what's going to be the best uh, movement in your case. Now, that said, let's talk about something for a second here. Um, let's take a, uh, a popular movement like... I know a lot of people like slingshots. I know Alex likes the slingshot. Um, I think the slingshot's pretty useless for the most part. Uh, there's, I will link a study. It actually um, shows less muscle activation in your triceps on the EMG, uh, and your triceps are a prime mover of the bench press. I would never want to use a tool that's inhibiting one of my prime movers uh, of a movement. Uh, whereas you take the and now they didn't use the Larson press. They used the dead bug style feet up bench press in this. So take this with a grain of salt. And obviously take every study with a grain of salt. Um, you know, these are on well-trained individuals. Um, and I'm pretty sure this one on the feet up bench press, there's like 20 guys. And I'm going to heavily uh, paraphrase here. But they were using 60% uh, of their one rep max. And I think they were uh, set uh, to use a, a certain tempo on their lifts. Again, I will link it, so if I misquoted anything, just call me a dumbass in the comments and say you're a fucking idiot. Um, but uh, the, the feet up bench press versus the traditional bench press, in this study, uh, the EMG results showed every single 
upper body uh, muscle group with more activation uh, with the feet up. So, and I'm talking like forearms, shoulders, pecs, triceps, literally everything that moves your bench press was showing uh, more activation. So th this is why a lot of people will uh, use this as a hypertrophy style accessory. Um, it, it isolates your upper body a little bit more. Um, and, and, you know, in an effort to build muscle, uh, big muscle, strong muscle, etc., they'll use this movement. And so, you know, just taking those, those two studies at face value, again, you have one movement, the slingshot, inhibiting triceps activation, which is, again, a prime mover of your bench press. Uh, and then the other movement, feet up bench press, uh, actually showing more activation in all of the muscles that are involved in the bench press. Uh, so, you know, it seems like out of those two, you know, there is clearly a better one. Again, you can look at like floor presses, close grip bench. Uh, there, there's, again, all sorts of accessory movements. And there isn't a single best one. There is going to be a best one for your application and your goals. Uh, so, yeah. But uh, now as to how I personally would recommend somebody incorporate Larson presses, should they want to do it. Um, first and foremost, like have a good, decent wide bench. Um, I have competition benches at my gym, so it's great on a narrow bench. It can be kind of sketchy. Um, and it may not be best suited for you. Uh, in that case, I have a narrow bench here at my personal gym. Um, and I won't Larson press on it because it is super duper sketchy. But if you, if you have a decent bench, uh, it's not, you know, a lot of people say the balance and all this and that it, it's really, really not that big a deal. Um, I found that it's, you know, not something that I've ever felt like I was going to even come close to falling off the bench. Um, as always, you know, if you have face savers, use face savers, you have spotters to have spotters, um, take all the safety precautions you need. Um, but it, it's not really felt extra sketchy to me or anything. So for a beginner, I would say it's probably not for you. I wouldn't do Larson press at all. Anyway, you still need to learn how to bench. You need to learn how to make yourself tight. You need to make sure that there's no power leaks in your, your regular form before you even go to a Larson style press. Um, and as, as a secondary movement, I would default to close grip bench, like weak triceps, uh, or excuse me, strong triceps are never going to be a weakness. So just, you know, bench press and close grip bench press until you move on to, uh, that intermediate level, you've mastered your movement, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, not really, not really a beginner style movement. I wouldn't do Larson presses if I was a beginner. Now, if you're an intermediate lifter, this is where I'd maybe think about Larson presses as a secondary, um, and probably in like that six to 12 rep range somewhere in there, depending upon your goals, um, using moderate weights, uh, obviously you can still push yourself, challenge yourself, come close to failure. Um, but you don't have to go ridiculous heavy with it. And again, I would, you know, have a, it as a secondary movement after your bench press, as you become a later intermediate, now it's something you can consider a doing for a primary movement on your bench day, your upper body day, uh, whatever you want to call it. And you can start to dabble in that three to five rep range and build strength with it. Uh, and I would still, you know, if bench press is the goal, I would still have bench press in my, my training split somewhere. Uh, so as not to, to lose any motor patterns or the skill of it or anything like that. Um, so you, you still want to be benching with your feet on the ground. When you become that advanced, advanced elite level lifter, this is when you can do something like I do where I will run entire off seasons of Larson press. Um, and the main benefit for me here is it saves fatigue on my lower body. Um, you know, a lot of people will say, why would you want to take the lower body out of a movement? Generally speaking, for most beginners and intermediates, you don't. You don't want to do that. When you're an advanced lifter, fatigue management becomes, uh, you know, a very, very, very big part of the game. Uh, especially when, you know, you're working on your squats and your deadlifts and maybe you're doing overhead presses and things like that too, even if you're not just a power lifter or you compete in strongman or any other things. Uh, 
fatigue management becomes something real. So that's when you would want to look at, I want to take the lower half out of this. I want to save that fatigue for these other lifts so I can still push those. Um, and you can do Larson presses as your bench press. Um, the, the stroke on the Larson press is going to be extremely similar to your bench press, albeit with a little bit more range of motion. Um, you can still set up an arch when you Larson press. Um, I still set up an arch when I Larson press. I don't have a big McDonald's arch. There's nothing wrong with a big McDonald's arch if you're competing. Um, but I still do, you know, you set an arch, keep your shoulders safe and everything like that. Um, and there, there's maybe an inch more range of motion on my Larson press than my regular bench press. So I, I can go, you know, 8, 12, 16 weeks without benching with my feet on the ground. Um, and I'm, I'm advanced enough now, I've done it for so long, that it'll only take me one or two bench sessions with my feet back on the ground uh, to, you know, feel comfortable again, have my stroke where it needs to be, um, and all that. So th it's something at that level, you can use it just, that is your bench. If you want to use it as your bench for an entire off season. And that's, that's the biggest benefit I get is the fatigue management aspect. And, uh, again, the, the stroke of the Larson press is almost, you know, it's virtually identical, uh, to my bench press. So that's, that, that's the progression you can kind of use it with, uh, you know, from intermediate on, should you choose to. Again, goal dependent. It's not better than a floor press per se. It's not better than a spoto press. It's not better than a close grip bench. It's just a different tool in the bag. Um, you know, and having the skills uh, to master and use multiple tools is only going to help you. Uh, I will say at that kind of late intermediate level um you know say you are somebody who is bench pressing 385 pounds and you can larson press 340 pounds okay if if you run say you want to run a training cycle and peak your larson press you do you know a a base building style uh training block into a strength building training block into a peaking training block. You take your Larson press from 340 and you know after this say it's a 16 week training cycle, you hit 370. You put 30 pounds on your Larson press. Really fucking good. You know, you did well. Um that 385 bench press of yours, it's going to have gone up. Um you might not you might, you know, your first session with your feet back on the ground just go ahead and say fuck it YOLO and bench 395 or 400. Um, if you took, you know, four to eight weeks to get back acclimated to benching with your feet on the ground, um, you'll, you'll reap even more rewards from it, but your bench press will directly go up by virtue of your Larson press going up in almost all cases until you're that very super elite advanced lifter. And, you know, then you're clawing and scratching for every five pounds. Then, you know, there's no guarantees at that point. Um, but from that, that intermediate stage on up to that advanced stage, um, your bench press will typically directly move as your Larson press moves should you choose to make a Larson press sort of a main movement um, within your bench training. Uh, yeah, and, and furthermore, I'll add, you, you can throw in other variants along with your Larson press. You don't have to exclusively just have the Larson press as it, sit, as it sits. You can set up Larson style and do close grip Larson presses. You can do Spoto Larson presses, close grip Spoto Larson presses. Um, you know, if 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 you have the safety measures in play, spotters, uh, face savers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. If you're somebody who trains with bands and chains, uh, you can absolutely set that up with Larson presses as well. Um, it's a super versatile movement. You can do almost anything you can do with a bench, any variant you can do, uh, you can do with Larson presses. So, uh, at, at the end of the day, again, for, you know, it, it can be used for hypertrophy. It can be used for strength, power, whatever, whatever suits your goals. It, it is extremely versatile. The only people I really wouldn't recommend it to is again, like the, the very early beginners, and if you have a really skinny or narrow bench, 
Um, it, it's pretty fucking sketchy, and I'd probably opt for fuller press or something like that uh, if that's the case. But if you have a decently wide bench, uh, competition style bench, something like that, like th there's, I, again, I've never had fear of falling off of it, and I've done it, you know, as many times, if not more than anybody else in the whole fucking world. That might be a slight stretch, but as far as what's documented on YouTube, I'm definitely there. So, you want to try it? Give it a shot. Let it ride. Peace.